Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we'll go through how to run the Stable Diffusion software using an AMD GPU on a Windows 10 operating system. For this tutorial, I'm using an AMD RX 580 GPU with 8GB of video RAM. CPU and RAM are less important for Stable Diffusion. As long as you have a decent graphic card, you should be able to run it. The Stable Diffusion model source code is written in the Python programming language, so we'll have to install Python first. I recommend that you get Python version 3.7 and above, and we'll get the 64-bit version. To get Python, you can come to this site, python.org. This is the official Python language site. Go to Downloads, All Releases. Since I already have Python installed, I'm not going to reinstall it, but I want to show you how to properly install Python to your computer. In this example, we're getting 3.10.7 and just scroll down to find the 64-bit Windows installer. Download that. When you open up the installer, you will see this window. Make sure that you check this add Python 3.10 to pass. This is very important because if you don't check it here, then later on when you use some of the Python commands, you will get problems. So make sure to check this before you install. Very important. I'm actually not going to install it because I already have Python installed, So, uh, but you will have to install it on your end. I'm going to cancel this. And the next step is we'll have to download a copy of the code, which is here. I want to point out that in this GitHub repository, we are at the DML branch. So there are two branches here. There's one called main and the second one is called DML. We are going to use the DML not the main. Just make sure that you are on the DML branch. And you can also tell that from the URL tree slash DML. I'm going to show you the reason why we're using this instead of the other one very soon. So once you're in the DML branch, you can just click on this green button to download the code, download zip. That should get you the zip file for the code. I've created a new folder for this project and just unzip the diffuser library that we just downloaded to the folder. Yes to all. Next, we need to download the nightly build of the Onyx Python library. This nightly build version is not publicly available, so you cannot get from pip install and you have to get it from here. There are four files and each one correspond to one of the Python versions, Python 3.8, 3.7, 3.9, 3.10, etc. Depending on which Python version you have installed, you need to get the corresponding version. For me, it's Python 3.9, so I'm going to download the 3.9. If you have a 3.8 Python, then you should get the 3.8 version instead. So that's it's done and I'm going to move this file over to this folder here. I just want to talk about this file a little bit. So see, this file has an extension of WHL. These are called the will files, and these are basically Python libraries that we can use pip install to install them. Now we have the code and the Python library. Let's go ahead and start building our environment. We have to do that in the command prompt with administrator privileges. So in your Windows search bar, type CMD to bring up the command prompt. Don't click on it yet. Right click here and choose run as administrator and click on yes. So now we are running the command prompt with admin rights. So we're going to copy this folder here first and we're going to navigate into that folder by typing CD and paste the folder name and the CD just means change directory. So now before we install anything here, let's create a Python virtual environment. If you're already experienced Python user, you know the importance of using a Python virtual environment. If you're new to Python, I highly, highly recommend using a Python virtual environment for pretty much each project that you work on. Because a Python virtual environment is basically an isolated copy of Python plus all the libraries. Using a Python virtual environment is going to save you a lot of headaches. To create a Python virtual environment, just type Python M VM. This is saying that we want to create a virtual environment. For the name, I'm going to name it MD underscore VM. As you can see in the folder, that's creating the Python virtual environment folder. Now we just need to navigate into that folder and then scripts. So if I show you in the folder view, it's going to be in the scripts and this activate.bat file, this is the file that we want to run. We are first going to change directory into there and we're going to run that by typing activate in the comment prompt. You should see that this virtual environment name appear. That means that we have activated the Python virtual environment successfully. And now we can start installing all this good stuff. I'm going to go to this folder. This is the diffusers DML library that we just downloaded. I'm going to navigate into that folder. This path is exactly this path right here. 
I'm going to install this folder or the code inside this folder as a Python library. And to do that, just type pip install dash e base dot. So the dash e means editable, dot means this current folder. So basically we are installing this current folder as if a Python library and we can use it later. This is also installing some of the dependencies. For example, this Hugging Face Hub is one of the dependencies that we need to use. That's done. And let's now install that wheel file that we just downloaded. I'm going to navigate back into this folder and type pip install. I'm going to copy the wheel file name, paste it into here, and that will install the Onyx nightly build. This is not installing from PyPy index. So that's also complete. And we also need to install three other libraries. I promise that this is the last bit that we need to install. These three libraries are transformers, PyPy, and FTFY. All right, so that's also done. And next, let's log into Hugging Face. If you have installed everything successfully, then you should be able to run this command. Hugging Face dash CLI login. It's going to ask you for the Hugging Face token. So you can find your token here. Just copy this URL and paste it here at the same site. If you don't already have an access token, just click on this new token here, create one. So it doesn't matter what name you give it and the row can be either read or write and just click on generate the token. I'm not going to do it because I already have a token. I just going to copy it switch back to here Control V to paste. And for some reason, I couldn't paste the token to here. So I tried this a few times and I couldn't get it work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the token inside the source code and the source code is this one and then the user.py file. Open up this one and look for this hugging phase thing. This is where the token is supposed to get input. I'm just going to hard code or copy and paste the token into here. So copy that again and paste my token here. Control S, save the file, close it. We're going to type the login function again, and now it's working. Now we have Python installed. We have installed the diffuser libraries and the Onyx library, transformers, SciPy, FTFY, and also we have connected to Hugging Face. So now we need to run one of the scripts that we downloaded from the modified diffuser library, which is here. It's going to be in the examples and inference, and we're going to run this save onyx.py file. Let's navigate to that folder. And what this file does is it's going to attempt to download the stable diffusion model weights from Hugging Face first. That's why we need to log in and then convert all those model weights into Onyx files so that later on we can use it on AMD GPU. So it's going to be Python save onyx.py. If you have a fast CPU, it's going to help a little bit here. But when you run the actual stable diffusion, a CPU doesn't really matter. All it matters is your GPU. I'm going to fast forward to the point where this script finished running. That script took about 10 to 15 minutes to run. Now you should see a new folder called Onyx appear in this folder. And as you can see that there are some weight files and there are also some Onyx files. These files were created by that script that we just run. And now we have all the weights and Onyx files. We can go ahead and uh, run stable diffusion now using our AMD GPU and on Windows. So let's try that actually to run the stable diffusion. We'll have to use this script dml onyx.py open that up so now we just need to scroll down to the bottom we can change this prompt i'm going to use this prompt that i copied from a reddit post if you type three quotes around your string variables then you can put them into multiple lines instead of one this way it just makes the display a bit easier to see and i'm gonna keep the uh, height and width the default 512 also the number inference steps as default as well 50 and i'm going to run this so because i changed the prompt i will save the file close it type the command python dml onyx.py to run this let me also show you the performance. So here's a GPU. And as you can see, it's loading the model into the GPU memory. And now this is starting. So this just means per iteration. Now it takes four, roughly four seconds per iteration. And remember that in our code, we specify that the number inference steps is 50. We can kind of estimate, let's say four seconds times 50, then it's going to be less than 200 seconds to generate one image. The program just finished running and let's check out our image. It's saved into this dml underscore one dot png. And there you go. This is the picture that we generated from this prompt. 
and it looks pretty good. I want to have your attention just for one thing. So this experiment was done using an AMD RX 580 GPU. So that's eight gigabytes of VRAM. And this GPU is supposed to be on par with, let's say, NVIDIA RTX 1070 or, or 1080. Uh, but I noticed that the stable diffusion runs much, much slower than this AMD GPU. So I think I was getting roughly four seconds per iteration on AMD GPU. To generate this image, it took about three minutes, right? To generate a similar image on, for example, NVIDIA RTX 1070, which is what I have, it will probably take 30 seconds to generate the same image. So NVIDIA wins by a big margin here. But if all you have is an AMD GPU, then this is how you can run stable diffusion on Windows. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you the next time.